All right, let's look at safflower now, Dale. We've got uh, two different kinds of safflower here. Uh, first of all, the safflower in general uh, is, it, it's a little bit like sunflower in that it's kind of that uh, heat tolerant, cool season plant like you talked about. Uh, it probably has a little more cold tolerance than even a sunflower. Uh, it, it's an oilseed crop, just like sunflowers are also. That's the commercial use of growing this. Uh, everybody's probably cooked with safflower oil. It's a very good cooking oil. Uh, so safflower has some good characteristics like that. It's got a good root system. Probably not quite as massive as the sunflower, but I think it's close. Uh, it does some really good characteristics in the soil uh, with the root system. Uh, the thing that has always kind of held people back, I think maybe from using a lot of safflower, is that when this stuff is fully mature, it, it, it really kind of looks like a thistle. I mean, it, th this isn't quite so bad yet, uh, this finch safflower over here, but it's starting to get kind of prickly, and that's why I'm letting you hold it, yeah. and I'm holding this Thanks. one. Uh, but, but it's when, good to be the boss. Yeah. <laughs> when safflower really gets mature, uh, normal safflower gets very spiny, prickly, almost like a thistle. So this one is called baldy, and it's completely smooth. I mean, I can just go like this, and even all the way up through seed production, I can go like this and not hurt my hands at all. It's, that, it does not have those projections, those spines. And so this is, uh, it's called baldy you know, for a reason, uh, because it doesn't have all those little sharp hair-like projections. This was developed a few years ago by Montana State University, and we've always liked safflower. It's a nutritious plant. It's, it's highly palatable, uh, except for those darn spines. And so we wanted to always put it in grazing mixes, but always kind of hesitated because guys think they're grazing thistles, and you can't really argue with that. So we bought the exclusive rights to this baldy safflower because we believed in it enough as a grazing plant that we wanted to be able to have this in a grazing mix, and cattle will eat this quite readily. Uh, because again, it's a smooth leaf, it's palatable, it's nutritious, and uh, so we would use this one if we're going to put it out in a grazing situation. We could use either one if you're going to do it in a cover crop situation. Now, I will tell you, if you're one of those guys that likes walking through your cover crop fields a lot, especially <laughs> later on, you'll want to have this one because this stuff, when it's mature, it'll poke right through your blue jeans. Yes, it will. And, uh... Plants have spines for the same reason that birds have birds. There's something desirable inside. So when you take safflower and you remove the spines, you make a very palatable. And when we turn livestock in, this is one of the very first plants that they'll go and select. It, it really is very, very palatable. And, and you know, and, and for an April planted, it's got some decent biomass, some decent growth. Uh, you could plant this in, in March or April like we did here, uh, but you could also plant this. It would be a great plant to put out in, a, in an August planted mix as well. Yeah. Because this is not going to freeze, uh, freeze out until it probably drops into the low 20s. So yeah. you're going to get extended growth into November on this plant, planted with some oats and some peas and turnips. Uh, really a good addition to that late summer yeah. planet. If it does happen to make seed, the seed is high in protein, high in oil, very nutritious to livestock, uh, foliage and seed. 